My name is Mio Stevens Gandara, and I'm the 48th Annual self of Graphics Exhibition Artist and Curator. The title of the exhibition is Everything Connected, Land, Body, Cosmos. And it's based on the idea that we're all connected in many different ways, profoundly, physically, we share the land, um, what we do impacts one another. Uh, the, the artists, I've chosen uh, nine visual artists and nine sound artists, and I've had them either work in tandem or together to create works for the exhibition this year. The artists I've invited are nine visual artists and nine sound artists. Their names are, for the visual artists, we have Yusin Gandara, Luis Hanaro Garcia, Sandra Lowe, Elise Pinolet, Pavel Acevedo, Jay Lee Garcia, and myself, Ann Johnson, and artist Carmen Argote. For the performing or sound artists, we have uh, Joe Galarza, Harry Gamboa Jr., Bo Mingus, Amy Shimshon Santo, George Wheeler, Andy Trece, Sashu Foster, Sosh Soshi Flores, and Ben Caldwell. Um, I found these artists, they were artists I, I've known or worked with or were recommended to me when I was telling people about my concept for the exhibition. And so it's always a little scary when you reach out to someone you don't know, but um, you know, I was lucky enough, every single one of the artists I asked said yes. And that shows a lot of trust in what my vision for this project. And um, I really appreciate that. And so so yeah, we're very fortunate to have these artists. Some are very, you know, established artists showing at MOCA and show, you know, parts. We have one artist that's part of the LA Rebellion and Harry Gamboa Jr. is well known in our community. Um, so yeah, we're super lucky to have them. Yeah, some of the works you'll see are, you'll, um, you'll see a piece by Ben Caldwell who is an elder in the Lamert Park community. Uh, he's showing an older film he has in his LA Rebellion days, um, which is a movement of filmmakers, black filmmakers in LA who came out of UCLA. Um, and I hope people kind of get inspired to look up Ben Caldwell's name. Um, Elise Pinolet, she, I don't believe she's shown at Self-Help Graphics before, but she's a known artist in Los Angeles working in ceramic tile. Um, Joe Galarza did a sound piece for us. He's a known sound artist in our community um, and visual artist, but he did an amazing piece um, uh, you know, under genetic wind songs. Um, and then we have Sashu Foster who uh, wrote a piece for this exhibition and uh, it's beautiful and he reads it. So those are some of the examples of what you'll experience. The print has, I think it's nine layers, it's a lot of layers. Um, the concept of the print, the image is Evergreen Cemetery. Uh, this is a cemetery located in Boyle Heights, many of the audience will be familiar with. Um, this, this cemetery is significant to me personally because I have an ant buried there in the Japanese section of this cemetery. It's also really significant to self-help graphics because it is the location of a lot of the early celebrations for Dia de los Muertos. Um, and I wanted to kind of touch on those connections. I also, you know, it's significant to the area of Boyle Heights, this ever-changing neighborhood. It's the largest non-denominational cemetery in Los Angeles and one of the oldest. So I thought it was, a nice way to represent all these ideas that I've been thinking about in an image, in a location. Like, like I mentioned, um, Evergreen Cemetery is, uh, is a symbolic cemetery for a lot of reasons. It includes a lot of the 
um, represents the cultural diversity of Los Angeles. And I think that's super interesting and relevant. Um, personal touches. I, I worked really hard with master printer Dewey Tafoya, who is amazing, and Gabby, his assistant, to get a color palette that's um, similar to a color palette that you find in Japanese woodcut. Um, Japanese woodcut's interesting to me, obviously, because I'm part Japanese, but um, early on when I was, you know, in my early days as an artist, it, I was kind of turned off by, by Japanese prints because I had seen so much of it growing up. And then as I matured and became older and did more printmaking, I realized the mastery of that type of printmaking and I love it. So I, I really wanted to achieve the color palette of those prints. The Japanese prints are watercolor. Um, and so it's really hard to create a silk screen that is inherently different to match that color palette. But we were able to do that. And so you'll find like that subtle, soft kind of color palette um, that you see in those prints. And I also have been looking at a lot of art deco imagery. Um, so looking at the kind of graphic nature of that and um, the edges of things in those art deco prints. And so I incorporated um, an art deco style border to the print. What do I want the public to take away from my piece? Um, I felt a lot of responsibility with making this piece. First of all, I was super honored to be asked. Um, though I've been part of self-help graphics for a long time, you know, I'm Japanese American. So again, it's like a showing of trust in the artist to ask you to make a print. That was a big deal to me. And I wanted to make something that you know, the community likes. So um, I want them to enjoy it. I want them to find something that they connect with being the theme of the exhibition and the idea behind the print. I want people to connect with it. And so I used a location that I felt like was really relatable to our community, really important to many different people in our community. Um, even people who have left our community have history in this area. So um, that's part of what I hope they take away from it. There is a spirit figure in the print that I haven't mentioned. That's kind of like the central part of it. And um, I, I got the idea for this spirit figure, this woman, um, sh she's a spirit. And so she, I got her from um, some of the archival pictures from the Self Up Graphics um, online photo archive. And so I modeled her after a couple of different dancers that I saw and I kind of did a composite image. And so she represents, she's her, she kind of is open to interpretation. People can see her literally as a spirit. People can see her as somebody that's um, like a, a goddess figure um, representing nature, whatever it is, some kind of spiritual connection to that place. And so that's another thing that I, I hope people connect with uh, and enjoy about this print. Dia de los Muertos um, holds meaning to me at self-help because I have been going to those celebrations since I was in high school. So that would have been in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and so it had, you know, it has a tradition for me as a community member. Um, it's an important time to do things with reverence and, and thought and intention. And I appreciate that. I'm not a religious person. I didn't grow up in a religious family. Um, in my family, though, you know, we thought about different Japanese traditions. There, there is something that wasn't huge in my family, but it is at an important holiday or a, an important time, which is Obon. So this is a similar um, kind of celebration where your ancestors come back and visit you. And so I think what I like is that 
it sounds like these two ideas, these two cultures intersect as do many cultures in many ways, right? We can look through and find different ways that we have similarities. And I think that's the point of, you know, being in Los Angeles and, and being part of this community. So for Obon, you know, you, you might put out some martinis. My grandparents love martinis and um, put out things. And, and there's also little um, characters. You put out little zucchini and eggplant um, or, you know, different characters that are symbolic during that time. And um, Dia de los Muertos has its own kind of symbolic thing. So yeah, I, 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 it's meaningful to me in many ways, most of all in which the way we can all kind of have a moment where we think, think and remember our ancestors and our people. Um, and that's really a great thing to do together. Um, this exhibition kind of shows a connection because first of all, during the curating process, I think curating is a lot of work and it's, and you kind of, it's almost like its own art piece, right? And so the curatorial part of this that I enjoy is bringing people together. I've done a few projects like that with self help graphics. And what I love about it is that it's a chance for me to bring together my family, my art family at self-help and bring them around a project or a concept idea and people connect. With this one in particular, it was super fun because I got to connect people who don't know each other or maybe never work together usually um, or knew of each other, but only a little bit. So um, that was interesting because I'm connecting people also that work in a different process, right? I'm connecting poets and writers and musicians and sound artists, filmmakers with other types of visual artists. And also I'm deliberately bringing in different communities of Los Angeles within the curatorial aspect of this project to, to you know, grow connections because we're strong together. And the more that we can um, use the rich resources of each other, you know, that we can do a lot of great stuff. So that was the fun part. Um, and then of course, once that's done, we're bringing in the community to see it, which is super great. And so during this reception um, on October 9th, you know, we're going to see all different kinds of people and their people come together and meet each other and intersect and, and um, so and connect and that will be great. So how did my photography background influence the design and concept of the print? I love this question because it, um, I, it, it has a lot to do with it. Um, I'm a visual artist, I'm a printmaker, but my day job, is I, I teach photography, I'm a photography professor. And so with all my work, it kind of always starts with a photograph. The landscape itself, I did mention that the Danzante was a composite of some of the uh, things that I pulled from the photo archives of self-help graphics. Um, I kind of just looked at different people and drew different things and kind of like took the hair from one thing or the gesture from another or the expression. Um, and then the, the graveyard of Evergreen Cemetery itself is a composite drawing. So I went out to Evergreen and I took a whole bunch of different photos from different angles, tried to think about the direction I'm looking at. And so actually the image of the cemetery in my print isn't a real angle. It's a composite of different angles where I get artistic license. I mean, it's, you know, legitimately taken from Evergreen Cemetery, but um, this gravestone may not have been there and this one might be over there and this scene exists, but maybe not, you know, all in the same um, angle. So um, that was a composite also. And I just like, I think when it boils down to photography influencing my artwork, I love detail. I just love to zoom in and see all the 
Um, the little details, all the kanji on the headstones that I can't read and all the um, just little details. So, so that's where it comes from. That influence it helps bring in all the detail. And I like to be able to take my own photographs too and add that into the design of the print. My oldest memory of self-help graphics is probably going to one of the Dia de los Muertos exhibitions. And in those days, it was at the old building. And I think one of the things that stand out in my mind is first seeing the mosaic uh, front of the building, which was super beautiful and a parking lot full of people and the Virgin statue, you know, food, and all kinds of cool stuff at night. Um, that's probably one of my earliest, earliest memories. I know I did see bands there at different times. Um, and that those exhibitions for Dia de los Muertos were uh, just everybody could bring something if I remember correctly. And so I thought that was really cool too. It wasn't um, this kind of, hold you at arm's length art exhibition. It was, everybody was involved and, and that was really impressive. Um, I've told this story many times before, but um, I, got, I got interested in self-help because I went to Sure High School in Montebello and we had a substitute teacher named Arturo Urista, who's, who's around still, and he, he taught, he was a sub for our art class and he taught us how to hide curse words in our artwork. <laughs> and he showed us his artwork and I just thought that was really cool, you know? So, um, so some of my friends decided to go and check it out. But yeah, I was kind of living um, in, in the Montebello area at the time. And so it wasn't, you know, that far and we are familiar with kind of that general area. So it was really fun. I want to invite everyone out there watching to come and see the exhibition. We have a reception on October 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. We'd love to have you guys come and check it out. Bring your headphones because you'll get a, an even more immersive experience when you see the exhibition with headphones. Um, there are different QR codes where you can put your smartphone over and it, you'll hear the sound for each paired with each piece. Um, and if you can't make the reception, please come anyway. The exhibition is open from October 9th to November 24th, right before Thanksgiving. So there's plenty of time to come check it out. I know you'll really enjoy it. Um, it's, it's a great show.